Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is lecture 24 and today we will understand about half cycle paths. Alright, let's get started. So by definition, a half cycle path is generally the case when a design has both negative edge triggered flip flops and a positive edge triggered flip flop. Then it is likely that there is a half cycle path existing in the design. A half cycle path could be from a rising edge flip flop to a falling edge flip flop or vice versa. So here is an example where the launch flip flop has a negative edge triggered flip flop nature and capture is here having a rising edge triggered. So it is actually fall to rise kind of half cycle path. In this kind of path, if we take the waveforms, it would be something like this. So in this case, if you see the launch is actually a negative edge triggered kind of path. So let's take an example here. This is launch clock waveform. This is capture clock waveform. And now let's take that this is 12 units and this is 6 nanosecond of path. So at 6 it is actually going down and at that time your launch is happening. So if it is a half cycle path that means your capture will be at next rise edge. So next rise edge is at 12 nanoseconds here. So your fall to rise path is this kind of path. So here setup will be checked at this edge at 12 nanoseconds of capture clock path and your launch would be happening at 6 nanoseconds in the fall side. And if you check hold it would be by default one cycle before. So you can say that one cycle before it is this edge or you can say that hold is checked from this edge with respect to this edge. So at 0 you are checking the hold with respect to the launch of 6 and at setup you are checking at 12 with respect to the launch of 6. Now to understand setup report for this kind of path, the half cycle path, we will take one example of setup report here. So this is the start point which is falling edge triggered. We have an end point which is rising edge triggered. So you can clearly see that it is also a fall to rise path and it starts with fall edge of the clock and that is at 6 which is look like this behavior here. So 6 is your falling edge here and the path starting is like this. So here if you see you have starting at 6 CLKP in with falling behavior and then there are two buffers so there are two buffers here also uck buff slash c it is having 60 ps and it is also having 60 ps so these are the two buffers which we are talking about here and then it hits the q pin so that is 160 ps so you have a 5 slash q pin till here it is 160 ps and then we have total data arrival time so total data level time is includes this path which is 6.31 nanoseconds. So 310 picoseconds is your data arrival path and there is 6 nanoseconds of launch. So you have 6.35 total data arrival time. Now comes the capture clock path. So that starts at rising edge of 12. So you can see that in this we are checking the setup at this edge which is starting at 12 and then we have clock source latency and other clock path related details and then clock uncertainty and here you can see that total data required time is 11.74. So in this case we are able to meet since we have enough margin we are able to meet the setup in this case. Now let us quickly also see the whole timing report for this kind of half cycle path. You can see that this is also half fall to rise path. Start point is again fall and end point is rise. So fall to rise half cycle path. Path type is min which means it is hold timing report. And you can see that here also launch happens at 6 which is equivalent to this waveform. Launch is happening at 6 but we will check hold at 0. So capture side we should be having starting point of 0. So you can see that capture is starting at 0 here. You can see that clock this rise is at 0 here like this. So it means launch is happening at 6 and total data arrival time will remain here same. So 6.31 again and your capture clock path is 6. It starts with 0 and total 130 p 
picoseconds. So you can see that it requires 130 picoseconds, but we have a huge data path here. So that is why you can see that data required time is when, when it is subtracted, it is meeting. Why? Because we have huge data path already and minimum requirement is already met. So that is why hold is meeting in this case. That's all for this video. We will come up with more concepts in further videos. Till then, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Please don't forget to give your feedback in the comment section. Thank you.